I saw a kind of grace on the life of Kenneth Hagen and his ministry. I loved it. I yearned for it. I converted it. And you know the Bible says we should convert honestly the best gifts. That means any gift that appears to you is convertible. Any gift that appears to you is accessible. He said, Covet honestly the best gifts. Covet honestly the best gifts. I converted it and I went after it. And thank God I got it. Everyone that covets the grace on this commission in this prophetic anniversary week, it must answer on your life. We normally share our individual testimonies behind every flyer, but this time we recounted the testimony of the mandate. And I must tell you, it's because of you that we printed this. So you can see what you may need to covet. And go after those things in truth and in deed. Now, listen to me. Among the blessings on this commission is heavenly order of prosperity. Can I hear your amen? You know, Heaven is the epitome of abundance. All the streets are paved with gold. There are no houses in heaven. There are no boys quarters there. There are only mansions there. The least believer is allocated a mansion. Just a display of the splendor and the abundance of heaven. And we have been translated to live in the heavenly places. Why here on earth? So abundance is God's plan for you on earth. Amen. And this ministry, by divine providence, flows in sweatless abundance. And from today, by that same encounter, your struggles with finances will come to an end. Amen. I call it here unending supplies. Say with me on ending supplies. Supplies that answer as the needs arise. On ending supplies, there is no comeback tomorrow. On ending supplies. It is wisdom to convert any gift you desire. And in the name of Jesus, every good thing that answers to this commission begins to answer to your life from now. Yeah. If I were you, you settle down on some of those items and many more that you see which appears to you in this commission. I said, Lord, I want you to make this my own anniversary gift. Let this one come my way as my own package in this prophetic anniversary. It's also important to know that this is the first time we're having an early morning event. It is a follow-up on the early morning awakening that has come down our way. How many are enjoying the covenant hour of prayer? Amen. So let's come for the deal of the money blessing. The deal of the money blessing this Saturday. Uh, and that goes in all of our churches worldwide. So wherever you travel to, you are a part of it. Jesus is Lord. Encounter with power. I'd like you to open your heart this morning for an encounter with the spirit of faith. The spirit of faith. And we having the same spirit of faith. I will say the same. 
is the same that has been from the Old Testament time till now. According as it's written, I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Now, so there is the same spirit of faith available to every believer on the earth. The same. Contending for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Jude verse 3, the same. And among the engracements on this commission is the spirit of faith at work in here. The spirit of faith is one of the components of the Holy Spirit. You know, there is one faith, there is one spirit, there is one baptism. It's one of the components of the Holy Spirit. It's the same spirit manifesting in diverse ways. From the testimonies of scriptures, we discover that the spirit of faith is the master key to a world of unlimited possibilities. The spirit of faith is the master key to a world of unlimited possibilities. The spirit of faith is the master key to a world of unlimited possibilities. Through faith, the subdued kingdoms, they wrought righteousness. Hebrews 11 33. They obtained promises, they stopped the mouth of lions, they quenched the violence of fire. They escaped the edge of the sword. Out of weakness, they were made strong. They waxed valiant in fight. They turned to flight the armies of the aliens. It is the spirit of faith that establishes our dominion on the earth. Dominion over the things that destroy others. Dominion over situations and circumstances. Why? Above all, taking the shield of faith. And I must tell you this. The shield of faith here simply means the spirit of faith. Above all, taking the spirit of faith. Wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the devil. The darts of the den of lion, the darts of the fiery furnace, you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the devil. Through faith, they pass through the Red Sea as on a dry ground. Number three, the spirit of faith is the only way for heaven to become a reality for you and me on the earth. The only way. He said, do not say in your heart we go to heaven up to bring Christ down or go down to the grave to bring him up. But what's the thing? The word is nigh thee in thy mouth and in thy heart. The word of faith which we preach. So it takes faith to experience the reality of heaven on earth. Because everything that we obtain from God comes through faith. What is unique about the spirit of faith? One, the spirit of faith empowers us to believe all things. Come on, say, believe all things. Empowers us to believe all things. Acts chapter 24 and verse 14. By this I confess that after the way we they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and the prophets. That is the testimony of Paul. And Paul was the one who said, and we have the same spirit of faith. So it takes the spirit of faith to believe all things. 
It takes the spirit of faith to believe all things. It takes the spirit of faith to believe all things. It takes the spirit of faith to believe all things. And what you believe is what you are empowered to become. It is not what God says that determines what you become. As many as received into them gave you power to become. Even to as many as believe on his name. It is what we believe that we are empowered to become. It is what you believe, not just what you declare. No. What you believe in your heart and declare with your mouth and refuse to doubt in your heart. They are the things you are empowered to become. It is the spirit of faith that empowers us to believe all things. To believe all things. And now we need that. Because we are contending with the spirit of fear. And it takes the spirit of faith to dislodge it. The spirit of fear cannot survive where the spirit of faith is domiciled. The spirit of faith will always rout the spirit of fear. It takes some <laughs> manifestation of the spirit of faith to head on for the Red Sea with 3 million people when we are not a suicide bomber. I mean, it, I mean, to lead that army of men heading for the Red Sea. No, that's not faith. That's the spirit of faith at work. That is the spirit of faith at work. The testimonies of Hebrews chapter 11 is the testimony of the spirit of faith. You don't dare the fear the furnace when you are not daft. No. But the spirit of faith will rout the spirit of fear. Get it off your path and forever. Therefore, today, receive upon your life a fresh baptism of the spirit of faith. The spirit of faith empowers us to believe all things. I mean, if you look at Paul the Apostle, he talks about believing all things. And then he went on in Philippians 4 13, I can do all things. Now, these are all manifestations of the spirit of faith. Empowers you to believe all things, so you end up being able to do all things. And hear what Jesus said Whosoever believes in me, the work that I do shall lead to us. He said, very late, very late, very late, I say unto you. That means I mean every statement I'm about to make. Every word of this statement I mean it. Who shall believe on me? The work that I do shall lead to us. And greater works than this shall lead to. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. There's a wide gap between the word of faith and the spirit of faith. A wide, wide gap. I want to believe that what entered into me in 1979 from the ministry of Smith Wigglesworth was the spirit of faith. Something from him landed into me and I knew it. The giant of faith, Kenneth Higgins said, I never met Wigglesworth, but I read all I could get about him until something from him rubbed in on me. Concerning John, they say, shall go forth in the spirit and the power of Elijah. 
And concerning Elijah, Elijah, they said, the spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elijah. Second Kings chapter 2 and verse 15. So the spirit of faith is a virtue transferable from carriers. The, it is a transferable virtue from those who carry it. Therefore, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, receive this morning a fresh release of the spirit of faith into your life. What's unique about the spirit of faith? It's a speaking spirit. What is it? <laughs> it speaks the unspeakables through you. It speaks what you may not be prepared to say through you. You are hearing it as he's saying it. Like others are hearing. For instance, my wife had a concern said, Bible school will resume next week. Where will they resume to? And the thing that speaks through me, spoke through me, is it your school? Now that's not a slight. That's the response of the spirit of faith. And immediately my eyes was open and I saw the Bible school. Clear building. And I got to the office and I asked one of the men, go to that place that's where the Bible school will be. Not go and try. Not go and try. That's where the Bible school will be. And then he organized the owner of the building to be standing in front. And he got to him and said, Barkadi, are you the landlord here? He said, no, Jesus is the landlord, I'm the caretaker. Jesus is the landlord. I am what? The caretaker. Now, that is an ass that is tied. Okay, we need it for the Bible school. For Bible school, then it's free. How many floors do you need? <laughs> we need that two floors. It's free. That is the response of the spirit of faith. It speaks the unspeakable. Matthew chapter 10 verse 20 He said Never consider what to say For it is the spirit of your father Which speaketh in you It is the spirit of faith Is the spirit of your father Speaking in you Now 1989 We had a landlady Who was the landlady of our church property In Kaduna She won't sell Okay But she now sent us a letter from her lawyer that we should vacate the place, no more negotiation. So I was there with some of the elders, and she was puffing. I said, Stop that! Have you ever seen any church under the roof, under the sun? You don't live to see one. I said, Let's go. It is the same spot that God no faith came. We didn't get home. We didn't get home. from that point. 13 acre came to replace two plots. The spirit of faith is a speaking spirit. You can't organize such statements. Man, you needed that property by all means because there was no other alternative. Later on, you'll be begging. Spirit of faith never begs. Never begs. So, from two acres in the wrong side of the town to 13 acres in the center of the city. Same day, same day, same day, the spirit of faith is a speaking spirit. You can't organize such statements. You can't. Now, for instance, you have only one wife. You are expecting your first child. And here was your wife and your cousin saying she had miscarriage. Cousin is a doctor. She's my wife. And I said, it cannot happen. Can I have my food, please? Now there is no oh, I hope it's not uh, you know stressful. The spirit of faith has no feelings. Has no feelings. The spirit of faith has no feelings. Because it just oozes forth through you. You are not organizing it.
And there is no way I'll be harassing all those witches the way I do if I were myself. But I tell you, every witch in here and the ones in Nigeria, eh? the ones in the global association of witches, all of them know. And that there's one short man, don't go near. He will fry you without knowing your name or knowing where you came from. He will fry you. Then there are people that which is beg. Please, I beg. Please, I beg. The spirit of faith subdues the forces of darkness. It's a speaking spirit. And what it says, it never doubts. Amen. I don't know what God has in store for you, but you will need the spirit of faith to capture them. Ay, 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 you need it. That man shall be dedicated. Great. But to say it and be as restful as before you said it is a spirit of faith. And not be thinking of options and alternatives <laughs> behind the scene. Are you following? <laughs> That's the spirit of faith at work. Therefore, receive this morning a fresh baptism of the spirit of faith. Now, the spirit of faith is an ever winning spirit. Ever what? Ever winning spirit. So don't assume the spirit of faith desperately desire and experience with the spirit of faith the spirit of faith is an ever winning spirit ever winning spirit ever winning spirit but this is the victory that overcomes the world even our faith no matter the intensity of the battle, the spirit of faith remains an ever-winning spirit. Pharaoh's army behind, the Red Sea in front, the spirit of faith is an ever-winning spirit. Fear the furnace that those who threw people inside and never got inside were slew, slain by the, fat, the heat. And yet people inside were walking worshiping God. The spirit of faith is an ever winning spirit. Therefore, by this release today, the last battle you lost is the last one you will ever lose. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest. Amen. The last battle you lost is the last you will ever lose. This is not winners by name this is winners by proofs this is a winning army ever winning army and because we're a part of that army I decree that your life becomes an ever winning life you believe it let me hear your loudest amen What is unique about the spirit of faith? The spirit of faith releases upon us the peace that passes all understanding. Hebrews 4 verse 3 They that believed have, He said For we, we which have believed do enter into rest As he said as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. And verse 9, he said, They have remained therefore a rest to the people of God. And 10, for he that is entered into his rest has ceased from his own works as God did from his. And verse 11, let us labor. Therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man shall fail and fall after the same manner of unbelief. So, 
The spirit of faith brings you and I into realms of inexplainable rest. What do I call it? Inexplainable rest. Men and brethren, I've never had one sleepless night on this ministry. 34 years. <laughs> One, I've not had once. The things that disturb you, they don't touch me. <laughs> Inexplainable rest. Glory to God. Inexplainable rest. And that is the platform for the eruption of signs and wonders. Be still. And you will know that I'm God. Psalm 46 verse 10. I'll be exalted in the earth. I'll be exalted among the heathen. Be still and you will know that I'm God. The Lord shall fight for you as you hold your peace. Exodus 14 14. So. The state of rest is the state of signs and wonders. It's the state of divine intervention. And it is the spirit of faith that brings you into that state of rest. Unshakable, unperturbed rest. No rain or thunder tampers with it. Receive this morning the tangible spirit of faith in the name of Jesus. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. And of course, it unleashes diverse supernatural manifestations. In John chapter 6 and verse 28, what shall we do that we might walk the works of God? And he said, the work of God is to believe on him. We may answer the words that I do shall you do also greater words that I shall you do. What shall we do? He said, the work is to believe. So, <laughs> belief is not cheap. Belief is work. Work. The work is to believe. Now, that is, you will operate at its frequency by believing. Very, very essential to you, though. Whosoever believes in me, the words that I should I do also. And greater works than this shall he do because I go to my Father. The spirit of faith is a trigger. The supernatural, the spirit of faith triggers the supernatural, triggers the supernatural, the spirit of faith triggers the supernatural. Therefore, from now, I decree that the supernatural will become your super, we will become your natural estate. Everything about you from this hour becomes a sign and a wonder. How to encounter the spirit of faith? Every empowerment of the spirit demands a thirst, a longing, and a panting. Oh Lord, my God, I will I seek thee. My soul thirsted for thee. And my flesh longed for thee in a dry and thirsty land. To see thy power. To see thy power and thy glory, even as I've seen thee in the sanctuary. Ah, my soul thirsted for thee. My flesh longed for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. I want to see your power. I want to see your glory. Isaiah 44 and verses 3 and 4. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offspring. So it takes a dry ground. It takes somebody panting for it to assess it. In my view, this must be one of the best gifts of the Spirit. 
the spirit of faith that puts you in charge of the issues of life and puts you on top of issues that are concerned to others. Somebody's breaking forth this morning. I was in my study and it came very clear to me that what came on me 79 July was not revelation. It was impartation of the spirit of faith. As I read that book, The Apostle of Faith, on the ministry of Smith Wigglesworth. It came on me and drive, you know, when anything drives you, it's an impartation. He said, and the spirit driveth him into the wilderness. It was that I was looking for every devil to deal with. Mark chapter 1 verse 12. And immediately, the spirit driven him into the wilderness. Driving. So every time you are being driven from an encounter, it is an impartation that has come on your life. When I got to that place to preach, and I said, have you ever made altar call for witches before? <laughs> How many of you are witches here? Stand to your feet. And they stood up. And I rejoiced. I said, sit down first. Maybe you know what I'm saying. I don't mean that because you ate in the night. No, if you're hungry in the day, you may eat in the night. If you take Gary to bed and you find yourself swimming, it's from the Gary you're swimming. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I said, I may you are a practicing witch. Not a make believe witch. If you know you are one, stand up. And he stood up again. And I rejoice. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And I drove to get there. So and I would like to go back and I'm talking to witches like that. And I said, Okay, come on here. What do you do with the devil? He said, Anytime we want to suck blood, we get on the highway. And anybody coming, we cause a vehicle to suck my son and we suck the blood. I said, what do when people like us are coming? 1979. He said, when we sense a higher power on the way we clear up the highway. In the name of Jesus, evil begins to clear the way for you. Somebody believe that? Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Therefore, the spirit of faith is our strength and our stay in the day of battle. The shield of faith is unquenchable by evil. The shield of faith is unquenchable by the forces of darkness. The shield of faith or the spirit of faith is ever in charge of situations and circumstances. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. But it's not enough to have the spirit of faith. We have a responsibility to Keep that spirit alive and working. A responsibility to keep that spirit alive and working. It's a living virtue. So it has to be fed and fed on the world. So let me, let me show you the picture. Now, the spirit of faith can be likened to a bonfire. And the bonfire has to be fed with wood to keep the bonfire alive and high. God's word is what the spirit of faith feeds on. Amen? Because you can grieve the spirit and you can quench the spirit. You can quench the gift of the spirit of faith by starving it. You can quench it by starving it. You can quench it by starving it. You can quench it by starving it. I feed my spirit man and its diverse components on the world, which includes the spirit of faith. There is no week, maybe let me not say day, where something significantly fresh does not come my way. This week that we just ended, I've had things I never read in my life. Things I never knew since I was born, since I came into Christ. I've had Jesus say those things to me. So you must feed 
the spirit of faith on the world or you quench it or you quench it you quench it for free you quench it so there is no word lazy believer who can sustain the operation of the spirit of faith the spirit of faith draws its energy from the world draws its strength from the world it's not enough to buy an aircraft it's important for you to know how much it costs to run it whether you fly or not most of the issues are time tied to time after six months this must go whether it's used or not after three months this must go whether it's used or not if you don't have to do that it will be granted so the spirit of faith is a kind of spiritual aircraft it has to be maintained or it will be granted it has to be maintained many of you have received this once and again but it's not manifested why is being starved it's been starved it's been starved it's been starved grace to take responsibility to sustain this great virtue and keep it working receive it now receive it now very quickly before we round off in this service on this covenant day of prosperity before them, please look at Leviticus chapter 6 and verse 12 to 13. The fire upon the altar shall be burning in it. It shall not be put out. And the priest shall burn wood on it every morning. And lay burnt sack offering in order upon it. And it shall burn thereon the fat of the peace offerings and verse 13 the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar it shall never go out man it's a lot of responsibility you need the word to keep the fire burning you need the word every day to keep the fire burning 